Thank you. Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tami. Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tami. Shiviti Adonai Lenegdi Tami. Shiviti Havaya Lenegdi Tami. Shiviti. Welcome everyone. About to hand over the reins of this workshop to my dear friend that I have known longer than any of you, Meira Gale. Shiviti. Meira, welcome. Wednesday night in the mosh pit. I'm so happy to be here and so excited to see all of you. So we begin. Make of the one your intimate reality and your truest self will shine in the divine. Make of the one your intimate reality and your truest self will shine in the divine make of the one your intimate reality and your truest self will shine in the divine So, what I want to do tonight is give you the tools for a self-guided spiritual journey that you can conduct over the next seven weeks on the run-up to the high holidays. And we will have some teaching first and then some experiences. So there were four handouts included in one PDF that is available to you as a link from Mark's email. And I think Mark might also put the link in the chat box, but you can get it later. And I want to assure you that everything you need is in the handout. So you can relax and listen now. Um, you will have four things. The first thing I call the compass. The compass is to give you direction for how to conduct your journey. And it's basically the notes of what I'm speaking now. It's an outline. Then you will have two maps. Those are so you know where you are in the tree of life. And those are to um, help you find yourself. And then you have a travel guide, which is my name for a study guide. The travel guide we're not gonna talk about tonight, but it's for you to use to develop your own plan. So that's all available to you. If you don't have it now, we'll help you get it later. There are seven questions to answer about Omer Teshuvah. You have them in your compass. One, what is the Omer? Traditionally, the Omer is the period of counting from Pesach to Shavuot. And it has a long history, which we won't examine here. A blessing is said each evening at the beginning of the next day from the second night of Pesach to Shavuot giving the day its number. This is for 49 days, and Shavuot makes it 50. So this counting is the journey from liberation at Sinai, uh, excuse me, liberation in Egypt to revelation at Sinai. But there is another way to count the Omer, which some of you know and have done. It is the Kabbalistic way to count the Omer 
using the tree of life. In this method, each week and each day has a specific attribute or meaning. The counting is an exploration of that meaning each day. I love this because each day we're deployed in a different way. Each day we have something meaningful to consider and guide us. And through this, we can feel the flow of the divine within us. So in this method, we work down the tree of life to the root and we get to the root at Shavuot. I'll show you all this soon. And within the renewal movement and beyond the renewal movement, there are many creative ways to experience the Omer, and I'll give you some flavors of that too, but there's a lot of that in your travel guide. Two, why is the Omer reversed? After we receive the Torah at Shavuot, we wander around in the wilderness for a very long time. In the northern hemispheres, this is the hottest time of the year. And in the southern, it is the coldest. We're talking about peak intensity. And we stay in the wilderness and deeply connected, you could even say stuck to earth, from Shavuot through Tisha B'Av, which includes this period of mourning that we are in right now. Then, from Tisha B'Av to Rosh Hashanah, we have another 49-day period. I think that's miraculous. I love it. And this time, we work backwards. Essentially, we're counting from 49 to 1, but we don't actually count. Instead of going down the tree as we did beginning at Pesach, we're going to climb up from the wilderness to heaven, which we might get to at Yom Kippur. This climbing up is the reversed Omer. And it's called Omer Teshuvah, the Omer of return, of doing Teshuvah for the high holidays. So this is a really cool practice because it's accessible at all levels and it gets you ready for the high holidays, which we know we are never ready for. Um, so, three. How does the tree look? Mark, can you do a screen share of map one and me? Is that possible? Coming right up. Okay. So you'll be getting an image of the tree of life. There it is. And I picked this one because it's pretty. And I'm not joking. And it gives you the class classic layout of the tree of life. There are other variations on it. It gives the name of each circle. Each circle is a sephira. It gives the name in Hebrew, in transliteration, and in English. So I thought that would be helpful to see it all there together. In addition, the spherot, which is the plural, are numbered. And so you know the order of the Omer going forward. And going forward, you'll see that we work down and we go right to left as we work down. This is all in your notes, so don't get hung up. Moreover, the translations here are pretty decent. There are many interpretations of these words that name the Sephirot. But these translations are close to a version that I prefer. You're gonna find multiple terms for the Sephirot in your travel guide at the very bottom. So there will be a choice of words for you to use. The colors here are, some of them are classic and some of them are not. Um, but don't get stuck on color. Color is one of the things that you get to choose.
studying the tree is a long-term proposition. So what I want to give you now is just enough to try it out for yourself as a tool. And I'm going to ask you to trust what you receive because that's the beauty of this practice. So let's look at this tree. It has 10 circles. Each one is called the Sephira. A Sephira is an attribute woven together in a tree with pathways between them to show their relationships. These relationships are important. This is like a chart of your DNA. This is the pattern on which we are each created that reflects our creator. So I'm really going to make a strong plea here. Do not think of this as a diagram of the divine plan. That's not enough. It's not enough to think of the spirit as concepts. This is not cerebral activity. This is not in the cognitive domain. I can't say it enough different ways. This is your life. This is your body. Your spirit speaks through your body, through this form. Four. Please leave this up for a while, Mark. Why do we do the Omer? Each Sephira is a living entity. She lives in you. That is why we do the Omer to Shiva. Each Sephira is an energy center. Each specializes in a particular energy and yet contains all of them. Each relates to all the others. Each is part of your personal anatomy. This is ancient wisdom. This parallels the wisdom of the chakras and of the meridians and Chinese trigrams and of other ancient appreciations of the divine within us. Our job is to identify this in ourselves. The Omer is a practice that facilitates this. This is the key. The divine sparks, the energies, the light, is embedded in us. She is there. Shekhinah is within us. It is our job to experience her, enliven her, embrace her, and bring her forth in our lives. So for those of you who are uncertain about the God concept and about the efficacy of prayer, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to try out using the Tree of Life to see what you can feel. My understanding of the divine is the united energy of all that is. The divine exists within us, around us, in many flavors. We can experience energy, move energy, transform energy, and that energy can move us, transform us, and guide us. So, let me be absolutely clear. The diagram in map one is a tool to get us there, but the actual tree of life is akin to your nervous system. It is an energy system in our bodies, energy centers we can tap into. So you're gonna find in your handout a second tree of life which is overlaid on the body of a person. And we're gonna talk about the positions of the various spherot on the body in a little bit. But you, and you'll see how this helps with the practice later. Now let's get specific about this tree. When we face the tree, we are looking in a mirror. Unlike medical models, it's not like you're looking at a person and you have to cross the body. You're looking in the mirror and when you reach out your left hand to the left side, that is your left side. You reach out to the right side, that is your right side. That is the only way to understand the tree of life. The tree takes the form of three triangles that are stacked up with a root down below. See if you can find the th three triangles, two point down and one point up. 
The Tree of Life represents four worlds. The three sephirot at the head level represent the world of Atsilut, which is the world of spirit, and the world of Bria, which is the world of mind or creation. These three are not part of the Omer. The top triangle is not included. When we do the Omer, we consider our, concern ourselves with the lower seven sephirot. These are the middle and lower triangles and the root. The seven sephirot represent the created realm. So when we focus on the triangle in the middle, it is called the world of Yitzira or formation, and it is the world of emotion. When we focus on the lower triangle and the root, we are in the world of Asiya or doing the physical world. You are encouraged to experience the spherot in your body as emotions, sensations, and senses. We're going to experience each of these seven spherot in a moment, and you will get from me the meaning, the location, and some creative experience for each one. But first, uh, Mark, you can stop screen sharing here. Um, this is your technical manual. How do we do the Omer Teshuvah? So this is in your compass within more detail than what I'm giving you here. But we begin the day after Tisha B'Av. But this year, Tisha B'Av happens to be moved one day because Tisha B'Av cannot be on Shabbat. So um, this begins on the 11th of Av, in this case, right after Tisha B'Av ends. So we begin Sunday, August 7th, which is this coming weekend. And we end Sunday, September 25th, which is Erev Rosh Hashanah. Every Sunday night is the beginning of a new week and the beginning of a new Sephira to focus on. So you will see, I have given you the Sunday night dates and the Sphira, and they go in the order from the bottom up, from left to right. Or if you're following the numbers on the diagram, you're gonna go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And you're going to explore that Sphira for a week and see what comes forth for you and then switch to the next one on the next Sunday night. But if you've counted the Omer Kabbalah style before, I recommend you do the deep dive. The deep dive gives you much more to work with. It means that every sphera has all the other sphero embedded within it. So onward to infinity. So each sphera holds in it all the others. In practice, this gives us a lot of possibility. With, um, so within each week, which is a specific sphera, there are seven spherot embedded. So the first day is one sphera, the second day is another sphera, onward through the week. That is also listed on your compass. So that means that each day of each week can have its own special flavor. Um, let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say what you have is this sphera within this sphera. And that's exactly how it's said in Hebrew. So let's take the first Tuesday. The first week is Malchut Shechina. And the first Tuesday is Hod. All Tuesdays are Hod this year, okay? So what we have is Hod that is within 
Malchut Shekhinah. And in Hebrew, we say it exactly that way. Hod she ba Malchut Shekhinah. Hod that is in Malchut, Malchut Shekhinah. So you end up with 49 varieties, a little like heights, but not quite. Anyhow, let's look at number seven. When do we do the Omer Teshuvah? Anytime between sunset and sunset. Anytime that works for you, there's no prescribed ritual. You create your own and feel free to play with it. So perhaps you want to make note of the shift from one day to the next. So you want to light a candle or wash your hands or sing a song, or perhaps you like to contemplate it at bedtime so it can soak in while you're asleep. I, did I say sunset? I meant to say sunset to sunset, yeah. Um, or maybe first thing in the morning, that's when I like to do it. Or if you go on a walk. And many people like to take the afternoon time, like a mincha time, and do something creative, like art, dance, music, poetry. So I have given you in your travel guide as many different possibilities as I could think of, but there are many more. That's just what came to mind. This is for you to play with and not try to do them all, but pick something that jumps out at you and see how can you express or encounter or experience the sphera in this manner. So what I want to do now is um, drop into experience, okay? I want you to close your eyes, if you're willing, put your feet on the floor, while I guide you through what is to come. We will begin at the bottom of the tree of life. We will give each sphera its name, its location, its translation. These are all part of the Kabbalistic tradition, and they are shown in your diagrams. Also, I will offer you a visual experience, a short embodiment practice, and a sound experience. These are purely interpretive and not definitions. I hope to evoke some understanding of the sphera and to facilitate your own explorations and self-expression. This is the journey to resonate with the divine within. So it's time to open your eyes and start the adventure. All right. This is meant to be participatory and to show you some ways you might go about doing this yourself. Again, we go from bottom to top and the key points will be in your notes. Welcome to Malchut Shekhinah. Malchut Shekhinah is the root sphera of the tree of life, the sphera at the very bottom. The root is represented as the base of your spine or the groin or the legs, depending on whose image you're dealing with. She represents the earth, the mother, 
the sacred feminine, the divine within, the sparks of light in the dark interior. Majesty, divine on earth. She is Shekhinah. We bring her forth and elevate her through the tree to the crown to join with the Holy One so that there is unity. So let's to connect to this in energy with this very simple movement. Now please move back so you don't hit your heads on the table because you're going to bend forward, okay? And the image of me might get a little blurry because of the background, but listen to the words. Put your hands on your hips and slide your hands slowly down the outsides of your legs to the floor as you bend over. Touch your feet, touch the floor. Move your hands to between your feet and now slowly touching your legs rise up between your legs to just in front of your perineum and let your hands rest between your thighs. Let's do that again, beginning on the outside of the hips and focusing on the feeling of energy under the skin as yang falls slowly and then yin rises. We welcome Yesod. Can um, Mark, can you post the words in the chat? Shiviti Havaya Lenegdi Tamid Shiviti Havaya Lenegdi Tamid Havaya 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 Ahava Ahava, Ahava, Shiviti, Havaya, Linegdi, Tamid, Shiviti, Havaya, Linegdi, Havaya, 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 Ahava, Ahava, Ahava. Yesod is our foundation. Yesod is the second sphere off from the bottom and is the downward point of the lowest triangle. This is the triangle of the physical world. Yesod is represented as the middle of the lower belly. She is the place where we birth our lives, our true and perfect selves, again and again. A place of powerful energy, a place of creativity, Let's connect to the energy of this center using the fingers of both hands. I'd like you to tap on the center of your belly a few inches below your belly button. Tap slowly and try tapping with alternating hands. Feel the way it feels when you tap on that energy center. And then close your eyes and visualize 
an orange dot of light right below your fingers. Tap to make this orange light grow large until it fills the interior of your belly. As you continue to tap, let the light travel down your legs to the earth. Let the light travel back up to the center. And now let the light travel through your central column up to the crown. Bring that orange light back down to where it began in the center of your belly. Place this treasure in safekeeping. Shiviti Havaya Linegdi Tamid. Welcome to Hod. Hod is splendor. Hod is found in the area of the left hip and grows partway across the belly and partway down the left leg. She is the left corner of the lowest triangle. Hod is the splendor of the created universe, of God's amazing creation. And Hod is humility, our recreate recognition of this great work and its continuing unfolding. Hod is beauty and the beautification of our fight for survival and of our legacy. We are so deeply in need of Hod right now. Let's connect to the energy of this center. Remember, this energy is not in the central column. It is on the side and it is paired with the sphera on the right hip. So we're going to do some, uh, some hip movements to notice the left and the left-right imbalance. So if you are able to stand, please stand. And please try to focus on the words because some of my image will move in and out of the picture. Okay, feet are apart. moving my chair. Uh, you don't need too much room in front of you for this. And I want you to start to rotate your hips from side to side. Your arms are just dangling like ropes. You're not swaying back and forth. You're turning. You're turning from the hips or the waist. And this is sometimes called the elephant swing because your arms just follow along like a trunk. As you show from side to side, swinging back and forth, this is fabulous um, exercise for your internal organs. Notice that your left and right have to work together to do this. and come to stillness, and then be seated.
Welcome to Netzach. Mark, we need words for this one. Shalom, 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 shalom. Salam, 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 salam. Om Shanti Om, Om Shanti Om. Om Shanti Om Om Shanti Om Netzach is persistence. Netzach is, Netzach is found in the area of the right hip. She extends partway across the belly and partway down the right leg. She is the right corner of the lowest triangle. She is partnered with Hod, and they work best when they're in balance. Netzach is victory. Oh, she is the right corner of the lowest triangle. I said that, sorry. She is victory, glory, legacy, endurance, persistence, the fight to be alive and to move ahead. We must strive, and we must balance our striving with the beauty and rest of Hod. Let's connect with the energy of this center and the partnership with Hod. We're going to stand again, if we can, with feet apart. And this movement is a little trickier, but you'll get it because it's a birthright. There is a figure eight and in us an infinity sign embedded in your body from hip to hip. And you're going to move with uh, in a figure eight. So one hip goes forward. When that one goes back, the other one goes forward. It's just a simple figure eight with your hips. You've kind of got that. You could put your elbows in there. Your elbows are going to exactly follow your hips. This figure eight is very, very important in a lot of mystical traditions. Now, if you like, let your arms be fluid, and you will find that they are automatically doing figure eights. This movement is known as chi dancing. Slowly bring your arms back down. Slowly bring your hips to rest. And let's sit again. Sha. Shalom. Shalom. Welcome to Tiferet.
Tiferet is harmony. Tiferet is found in the heart center, in the center of your chest. She is the lowest point of the middle triangle now, the triangle of the emotional world. She is the center of the entire tree of life and is one of the four spherot on the central column. Tiferet is beauty, harmony, balance, compassion, order. She is sensitive to the balance and imbalance of the other spherot. So let's connect with the energy of Tiferet and feel the flow through the whole body. This will be a breathing meditation. If you're comfortable, please put your feet on the floor and close your eyes and take a breath in through your heart. And exhale that breath out through your crown. Let the next breath come in through the crown and descend to the heart. And the out breath goes from the heart down into the root. The in breath goes up from the root to the heart and the out breath through the crown. Continue this breathing pattern down to the heart, out through the root, up to the heart, out through the crown. A few more rounds. One name for this breathing pattern is heaven and earth breathing because you are the channel that connects heaven and earth. Welcome to Gavura. Ready? Oh, yeah, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you with life oh yeah prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true and with thanksgiving i'll be a living sanctuary for you. Gavura is inner strength. Gavura is found on the left shoulder, extending across the chest a bit and down the arm. She is the left upper corner of the middle triangle of the Tree of Life. And she is partnered with Chesed on the right side and they work best when they are in balance. Gavura is classically shown as judgment or strength. However, better interpretations include inner strength, boundaries, discernment, or justice. Gavura is about establishing a container for chesed to flow into, to be held in, and to have limits set on. So let's connect with the energy of Gvura. Once again, I'm going to invite you to stand if you can, but this could be done seated. However, you need plenty of room in front of you not to hit the table with your arms. So place your feet shoulder width apart, 
let your arms hang loosely at your sides, shake them out a little. Okay, now imagine that there are strings tied to your wrists. The strings are pulling your arms up very slowly, your elbows are straight, and your fingers are drooped. And they stop at shoulder height. I'm going to position myself so you can see me. Now let your elbows come back towards your shoulders. Your fingers are still drooping. Raise your fingers up and let your hands float down. All right, that's one cycle. Now we'll do it again. Your hands float up on yin energy rising. Draw them back. Raise your fingers. Yang energy falls. Once more. Yin rises. It's all very fluid. Comes back. Fingers up. And yang to stillness, feeling that container for that energy. Oh, yeah, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Welcome to Chesed, the last stop on our journey. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be peaceful and at ease. And may I be happy. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. And may you be happy. May we be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we be peaceful and at ease. And may we be happy. Chesed is loving kindness. Chesed is found on the right shoulder and extends partway across the chest and down the arm. Chesed is the upper right corner of the middle triangle. Chesed is the partner of Gavura. Chesed is also called mercy or love and is about bestowing goodness. Chesed, like Netzach, is an active or bestowing energy. Gvura, like Hod, is a containing and receiving energy. Let's experience the energy of Chesed. Chesed is the river that flows within the banks of Gvura. Chesed is movement. Once again, you may stand with your feet apart. Um, this can be done sitting, um, and you need room to your sides, okay? Where am I? Where am I in the picture? Come on, picture. There we go. Okay. So, um, shake your arms a little bit. Shake out. Where are, I? Where are we here? Come on, picture. Hmm. Here we are. <laughs> oh well, you're just gonna have to listen because I can't get an image. All right, I want you to raise your arms to the sides, just to shoulder height. And feel as though they are wings. Let's lower them. Raise your wings again. Feel the wings attached in the back and lifting up and lower them. Raise the wings, put the hands up, fingers pointed up, 
And now pop them in and out and flap your wings. Flap your wings. You're going elbows in, elbows out. Sorry, this is where image would help. Okay. Now, let your arms come down. Raise all the way up to the top. Turn your fingers outward, palms outward. And using your fingers as paint brushes, paint the rainbow across the sky as you bring your arms down. Up through the middle again. Turn your palms outward and paint the rainbow across the sky. Come to rest. Come to be seated. May they be filled with loving kindness. May they be well. May they be peaceful and at ease. And may they be happy. Well, friends, I'm happy because I completed that. And now I, you have an opportunity to say what you would like to say. Anna L. Thank you for inviting me to this delightful experience. I will have to go momentarily, but I'm so glad that I got to experience this multi-sensory journey. It was just beautiful. Thank you. Mary Rita. My body is just so pulsing and so filled with the tree and with the spirit. Um, thank you so much. It just has built, as I look out at one of my trees that are in front of me, um, oh, what a beautiful way to, to do the tree. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Marlena. It filled my heart and my senses, truly beautiful. Thank you. I take questions too, as well as thanks. Um, Elaine, Alana. It was, it was a delight. I loved your um, inclusion in, of movement, uh, the musicality, the chants, both the ones that were familiar to us and the ones that might've been new. And um, every time I get the opportunity to discover and study the Kabbalah tree of life, I always learn something new. So of course I learned and, and just felt something deeper this evening. So thank you, Yashukola. Thank you. Jira, Jira Arit. May era, I have known you with the Omer for at least 10 years. And each year I marvel, you went through the puppets, all those wonderful things that I couldn't wait to sign up for this. You, um, I feel like a proud big sister. I have watched you grow up all within this Omer structure and with all the, the different ways tonight that you took us I am so proud of you and have only one thing to add, which is coming right now onto the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair Orit. Yeah, you were there when I had my introduction to the Tree of Life. Someone else had a hand. Susan. The word gorgeous comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous teachings from Gorgeous You. Um, you. It's wonderful to see you. It is wonderful to see you and everybody else. Um, I can't wait to see what comes forward for me 
in these 49 days. I'm so excited. I have been searching for my way to prepare for the high holidays and this presented itself perfectly. Of course, from you. <laughs> Thank you. Hiya. Did I see anybody else who want to ask a question or make a comment? Abby has her Deborah. Hand. Yeah, Deborah. Oops. Well, um, Mayra, <laughs> I told you this before, but I'll repeat it again. I am so averse to doing anything physical when it comes to these things. And when you you practiced it with me or I practiced it for your test run and I went into it so easily. And then again, today I thought I was resisting and then I got into it and it just, it's so amazing. It's just, <laughs> I'm so thrilled to find things that I don't balk at doing. So thank you. The whole thing is fabulous. Thank you. Including the introductory part, which I didn't hear. <laughs> um, yes, I didn't rehearse. So I I had a couple of people who uh, helped guide me through this and Alana was one. She helped me with the teaching part and the chanting and uh, Deborah helped me do an entire run through of the experiential part, which is a coordination effort. So I needed I needed to do a test run. Hey, I have just one more comment and I I long to do this last year to do the reverse Omer and I I figured I could figure it out by myself and then I chickened out you know I just thought I don't know how to do this and when you said that you were going to do this it was like the answer to yes like I had been waiting to it's like I've been waiting to do this all my life <laughs> yeah but I've been waiting to do this through my life with the Omer and I am just so grateful so so grateful and I will take some of your chance and some of your movement with me you know and get creative and see what comes what happens and I can't wait to ask Susan you know I, I, I'd love us to get together afterwards and say this is how it's been for me. Maybe yeah, and I'm willing together. to also get together with people if they want to talk about what they're doing and how they're doing it. Are we complete? Have we all spoken? Jay, Jay has his hand up. Oh, Jay, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Hi, Mayara. Thank you for such a wonderful evening. I'm sorry I didn't jump on right at the beginning. So, um, and I appreciate the different backgrounds being a background person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a particular question about, and maybe you discuss this, I mean, the different parts of the body mm -hmm. um, and how they relate to our own personal experiences with those different areas of our body. So, for example, I had a left shoulder injury, brachial plexus, and, you know, in that representation of, uh, I guess, what is it, judgment? and Right, Gavura, it's inner uh, Yeah, and boundaries, and I've also had challenges with those things. So, I don't, <laughs> is there a personal body part connection? In, Absolutely. In, in fact, in fact, it, that's the whole essence. You go oh. into your own body at that place and you see what the message is there. And you can heal wounded spherot. There are wounded spherot and there are healed spherot. And there are spherot that are in relationship to the other one. So if you're, if you're left, your gavura, your discernment is somehow unhappy it needs to talk to your chesed they need to have a dialogue it's actually a really great therapeutic tool okay thanks for the question i appreciate it good to know thank you thanks and thanks for that card you sent me a while back to oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm always thinking of you
Yes. Are you going to do any kind of blog or um, teaching uh, or or kind of a cue as to which day is which? Or that's all in the in the in the handout, right? Well, it's in the handout, but um, I'm willing if I have people tell me that they want it. I'm willing to send out to those particular people what's happening on a particular week or day or. Um, also, a couple of people have asked to be in a little like spirit buddy, Hevruta, and I will set that up if you let me know you want to be in it. Um, Shiro, Great, Arit is, Shiro Arit is number one in it, <laughs> and, uh, and Alana is number two. Um, yes, I can do that. Um, also, I, I really mean it. If anybody has any questions as they work through this, I'm happy to take emails or phone calls because I love doing this. And I know it's very dense. It's a lot of material, but it gives you so much choice. Okay, are we ready to wrap up? All right. So I want you to think about these words because I chose this chant for a reason. Make of the one your intimate reality and your truest self will shine in the divine. Make of the one your intimate reality and your truest self will shine in the divine. Make of the one your intimate reality, and your truest self will shine in the divine. Make of the one your intimate reality, and your truest self will shine in the divine.